At flipsidegaming.com you can use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10, and now you also get automatically entered into the Richard Kane Ferguson Playmat giveaway. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a banned Super Friends deck featuring Bioessence Hydra, 5 mana for a 4-4 Hydra Mutant with Trample that enters the battlefield with a number of plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, equal to the total number of loyalty counters on Planeswalkers we control. So the Hydra plays great in the Super Friends style deck. And then also whenever one or more loyalty counters are put on Planeswalkers we control, put that many counters on the Hydra. So not only when we play the Hydra does it get big when we have Planeswalkers in play, but if the Hydra is already in play and we follow up with more Planeswalkers, the Hydra will keep on growing. So let's take a look at our entire decklist here, starting out with our two drops, where we've got three copies of Fibblethub, the lost two mana for 1-1, that draws a card when it enters the battlefield, so it kind of gives us an, a proactive early play that we can also use to maybe chum block with and protect our planeswalkers. Then we have the full play set of Seal Away as our spot removal spell of choice, can play that instant speed thanks to Flash, and this exiles a tapped creature from the opponent when it enters the battlefield. We also have the full 4 copies of Gross Spiral as another proactive turn 2 play that can help us ramp by drawing a card and letting us put an additional land into play from our hand. And both of these 2 mana instants play well alongside our 5 mana Teferi Hero of the Monaria, which untaps 2 lands after we use the plus 1 ability. Then at 3 mana we've got 2 copies of Narset, Parter of Veils, with the static ability preventing the opponent from drawing more than 1 card each turn, so great against any blue deck. And then the minus 2 lets us look at the top 4 cards, and we can reveal a non-creature, non-land card from among those and put it into our hand. So this can help us find more planeswalkers and more removal spells. We also have 3 copies of Teferi Time Raveler, which also shines against opposing blue decks, forcing them to play at sorcery speed. The plus 1 lets us play sorceries during the opponent's turn as though they had flash, so we can maybe play a sweep effect at instant speed. And then the minus 3 lets us return up to 1 target artifact, creature or enchantment to its owner's hand, and we also get to draw a card. We can also use this ability on our own enchantment, so we can maybe pick up a seal away that we played in the early game on a weaker creature, to then answer a bigger creature the opponent played later in the game. And then we have two copies of Kiora Behemoth Beckoner, which plays great alongside Bioessence Hydra, because whenever a creature with power 4 or greater enters a battlefield under our control, we get to draw a card, and then also starts out at 7 loyalty, and the minus 1 letting us untap target permanent, so we can play turn 3 Kiora, turn 4 use the minus 1 to untap one of our lands, and then cast a turn 4 Bioessence Hydra, which will come into play as maybe a 10-10, thanks to the 6 loyalty that's remaining on Kiora, and the Hydra will only grow from there. And then at 4 mana we've got 2 copies of Kazmina, which can generate 2-2 wizard tokens and helps us draw and discard so we can maybe loot away additional lands we don't need or additional planeswalkers that we already have in play. And the static ability also protects our creatures and planeswalkers, making opposing removal spells more expensive. We've got 2 copies of Ajani, the Great Hearted, which can give our creatures vigilance so we can maybe attack with the Bioessence Hydra and still have it back on defense. The plus 1 gains us 3 life, which shines against the red aggressive decks, and the minus 2 distributes plus 1 counters and loyalty counters on all our creatures and planeswalkers, so it plays great in the Super Friend style deck, where we can maybe get to an ultimate of a planeswalker even faster, thanks to Ajani. And then two copies of Tamiyo, which can be used to return a card from our graveyard back to our hand, so we can maybe get back a sweeper effect or get back a planeswalker that died. The plus one lets us name a card and dig for it, so we can dig for maybe a Bioessence Hydra or a Time Wipe, as we'll get to in a second. And the static ability on Tamiyo protects us from discard effects, like Thought Erasure or Nickel Bolas, and also protects us from sacrifice effects, like maybe Liliana Dreadhorde General, so that can definitely come up as well. Then at 5 mana, of course, we've got our 3 copies of Bioessence Hydra. We don't want to draw too many copies of Bioessence Hydra, since that means we likely didn't draw many Planeswalkers and then the Hydra is going to be relatively small. So ideally we just draw one Hydra alongside a bunch of Planeswalkers, which is why we only have 3 copies instead of the full 4. We also have 2 copies of Teferi Hero of Dominaria, which is great, letting us draw more cards. The untapped 2 lands is relevant alongside Seal Away and Grow Spiral, and the minus 3 can help us deal with any problematic permanent that the opponent might have. And then, thanks to Ajani, we can even get to the ultimate ability even faster. And then we've got the full four copies of Time Wipe as our sweeper of choice, which plays great alongside Bioessence Hydra, since we get to return a creature we control before destroying all creatures in play. So we can force the opponent to overextend to get past our Bioessence Hydra with a creature deck, and then Time Wipe, pick up our Hydra again, wipe the board, and then the next turn we can replay the Hydra to force the opponent to overextend once again into maybe a future Time Wipe. And then finally we've got one copy of Ugin, which can provide a board presence and card advantage with the plus one ability, and the minus three can also help us deal with any permanent opponent controls that's one or more colors, so it cannot deal with lands since those are colorless, and it cannot deal with artifacts or opposing copies of Ugin, but otherwise it deals with almost everything. 
And then taking a look at our mana base, we've got three copies of Interplanar Beacon. I wish I could fit in the fourth copy, since this can gain a bit of life whenever we play Planeswalker and can also help us fix our mana when it comes to casting Planeswalkers. We've got one basic land just in case of Field of Ruins or Assassin's Trophies, and then a lot of the dual lands for Glacial Fortress, Hallowed Fountain, Sumpel Grove, Temple Garden and Breeding Pool, and only two copies of Hinterland Harbor, since we do need both blue and green on turn 2 for Grow Spiral and Fibblethub early, but we also need double white for Time Wipe on turn 5, so the mana requirements in the deck are pretty strict, which is why we don't have room for the fourth Interplanar Beacon if we want to fit in the basic land as well. Alright, that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a decent looking hand, double grow spiral to help us ramp into these powerful planeswalkers. We'll try it out. Can lead with Hallowed Fountain. Some Petal Grove comes into play untapped. Let's see what we're up against. Turn 1 Watery Grave, so probably some sort of Asper control deck. Do they have the turn 2 Thought Erasure? They usually do. Gets to take away probably Teferi or Ugin, considering we've got double Gross Spirals anyway. Takes away Teferi. And gotta find more Planeswalkers here. Probably should have uh, put the Temple Garden in place so we didn't have to pay 2. Can run out of Cura now. Although if we drew into another beacon, then we would have gained one more life by playing the beacon first with the Gross Spiral. Alright, so next turn, if we draw land, we can run out Ugin. Thief of Sanity. So it's pretty important that we draw land here. In our next two draw steps, perfect. Bios and Sidro is great too, but we gotta get rid of this Thief of Sanity first. So our opponents might be as per mid-range instead of as per control here, since they usually don't main deck Thief of Sanity in the control variant. Contempt exiles Ugin. Play Hydra, draw a card. And we can untap land and have access to Gross Spiral. Alright, hopefully the Hydra sticks around. Doesn't look like it. We'll let the Teferi happen first before casting the Gross Spiral. Time Wipe doesn't do much here. Our own Teferi. So do we want to minus onto the opponent's Teferi? Or do we just draw a card anyway? I think we minus. Also has the upside of not drawing the Hydra in case your opponent has a Thought Erasure. And say go. Alright, there's Thought Erasure. Can take our Time Wipe. So glad we didn't plus with the Fairy now. And Deputy exiles our Teferi, fair enough. Replay Hydra. The Fairy Time Raveler is great here. Let's get moving. And our opponent concedes. Awesome. Sweet. All right, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. Turn to Fubblethub, some options on three. Into a Tamyo. Turn to Demir Spybug, all right, opponent on a Surveil deck. Let's uh, run out our Fubblethub here. Kazmina, good pickup. 
Tamio can help us protect from this card, like Thought Erasure. Although they will get a, an opportunity to play it this turn. Night Veil Sprite. Spybug attacks. Time Wipe is going to be quite decent as well. So I don't mind running out Kiora here. If we Teferi minus, then they can r take out Teferi. Kiora means we can maybe cast a Time Wipe next turn. Yeah, let's run out Kiora. And see if they run out more creatures, or if they start attacking our hand. It's gonna be Discovery. Spybug up to a 2-2. It's gonna be a 3-3 by the time the Sprite attacks. And a Soul Diviner. Alright, so this uh, Time Wipe lines up pretty well. And they will go after Kiora. Soul Diviner pretty good alongside Demir Spybug, of course. We can Time Wipe, pick up our Fubble Thub for value. Which is why we didn't want to attack first. Since with regular sweepers you would want to kind of bluff attack to see if you can sneak in some damage, but with Time Wipe that's no longer the case. And a Bios and Sidra is looking good here. Although we could also Teferi minus... I guess we can wait a turn. Get some more Planeswalkers going first. And yeah, opponent's just gonna concede they're too far behind. Next turn we were gonna be able to play a pretty sizable Hydra to start pressuring them and close out the game. Alright, we're on the draw, hand looks fine. Facing a turn one Boros Guild Gate, so it could be the Gates deck. Or just a red white midrangey or aggro deck. Alright, add on to Vanguard. Can survive our time wipe, so pretty good threat here. We're just gonna run out a growth spiral, end of turn. Don't have much removal at the moment. Of course, seal away would be a great answer to an add on to Vanguard. And a Cranko, Tin Street, Kingpin. So I guess this is just a feather deck running Cranko and Adanto. Yeah, Cranko could be scary here. And Silo is not a great answer for Cranko since they get to attack with him first. We'll put a tap plan in play. And Teferi Time Raveler probably have to do some damage control here with Teferi minus on Cranko. And uh, hope to draw into a sweeper at some point. Alright, Fubble Thub could be useful. So next turn we have a number of options. Adanto takes out the ferry. This is hardly my worst defeat. And are they just gonna replay Krenko? They are. And a fourth land, so they could also have the indestructible trick here at the ready. So time wipe might not uh, destroy anything. Fubblethip can at least chum block for a while. I guess we'll play Fubblethip first, see what we draw. Glacial Fortress. So I guess just running out a growth spiral could be fine too here. Could do it main phase in case we draw seal away, because then we want to put Breeding Pool into play untapped perhaps. Although I guess we can just play two check lands as well. I think we'll grow spiral main phase here. See what we draw. Right, no seal away in sight, so we can just play this, put it in play tapped. Suppose we could have uh, played another Fibble Thub, but it's better to chum block two consecutive turns. So your opponents will get to untap with Cranko. Let's see how much damage they can do here. It's gonna play Feather. Yeah, and if they have. Alright, never mind. Potent taps out for Arcanist. 
So probably implies they don't have the sheltering light. So we can block Vanguard, force them to pay for life. And yeah, it's all about time wipe. If we find time wipe, we probably win this game. If we don't, then we're gonna fall behind very quickly. Sealway isn't terrible. So let's see, six mana, seven if we play land. I guess we start with Fibblethip and see if we can find a time wipe off the top here. And then we can still have Teferi and Sealway at the ready. Time wipe would be great here since we even get to pick up Fibblethip instead of Jani. All right, I guess uh, Teferi is gonna bounce something. Could bounce Krenko, could bounce Feather. Feather is probably the scariest card. Although Krenko is pretty scary too. I think we'll bounce Krenko and then we can maybe just exile Feather with the seal away. Although it is tempting to keep seal away for Odonto Vanguard since Feather dies to time wipe whereas Odonto does not. Alright, so we went through 18 cards already, no time wipes yet, so Gideon is also a problem. I am here to aid in the assault. Although we can also exile it with the seal away. I believe in you, friend. If they give Feather Vigilance, they can play around seal away, instead they decide to give it lifelink. So, important decision here, whether or not we seal away Feather or Adanto Vanguard. Both tokens go after Teferi, so we can't save him. I think we seal away Feather. I'll do that before blockers, just to see what's up. And now we'll block the Vanguard. Put on down to 10. You just let me know if you're up for round two. And another Arcanist. And there's a time wipe. Well, we kind of got punished for exiling Feather instead of Adanto Vanguard now. So do we need to time wipe right now? Or can we afford to wait? Five, six, seven, plus four. Yeah, I don't think we can wait. So we can time wipe and then play Kiora. I guess that's fine. If we still had a Fibble Step in play, we could have picked it back up. Opponent's gonna fall to six here, making their Adanto Vanguard indestructible. Can't really punish them for it. And I'll play Kiora, even though Kiora's probably gonna die to the Vanguard and the Gideon. We kind of gain 7 life here, which isn't bad. Just can't help myself. <laughs> and then we can use Tamiyo to get back the time wipe. If Kira's still around, we can cast the time wipe in the same turn. So we'll see whether or not they ignore Kira. They don't. So now we need a land in order to play Tamiyo minus and get back time wipe and cast it. Gonna go for a swim and cool off. Or we can just draw a time wipe off the top. Works for me. Point falls to two. <laughs> but now they can use Gideon to give the Vanguard lifelink as well. More vanguards. Alright, all the vanguards. Yeah, that was going to be difficult to beat. Need our seal away is basically to exile the vanguards. Your light will cleave the darkness. Opponent is down to five, so they can only save one vanguard from time wipe. But uh, don't have enough mana to time you into a time wipe. So I guess we'll play Fibblethub first here, see what we draw. This would be a matchup where drawing our Hydra would have been nice, just giving us a big blocker on the ground. Ugin the draw. 
can make a token or go after Gideon. But I'm pretty sure we're dead regardless here. Gideon can also minus six. I guess they can uh, forget to attack our life total and go after Ugin first. But yeah, imagine having a Bioessence Hydra in play, then those vanguards don't look as scary. A good game, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and our hand seems reasonable. Don't have actual green mana for the Hydra, but we've got a few draw steps to get there. And in the meantime, we've got Fibblethup and Seal Away as early plays we can make. Turn on Forest into Pelt Collector. Well, the mono green Stompy and Gruul matchups is where the Hydra shines, since those have a hard time in dealing with our Hydra. And we picked up the Sunpel Grove, perfect, so we've got the green mana lined up. I think we'll lead with Fibblethup. Hold on to the Seal Away for now, even though the Pelt Collector is definitely going to start growing. We'll take two from the Pelt Collector. Grow Spiral, good pickup. So next turn we could already play a 4-4 Hydra. Seems decent. So we'll play the Sunpetal Grove here. Fibblethip can stay on defense. Trades for the Branchwalker. The Hydra is going to be just a 4-4 to begin with, but as soon as we play Tamiyo it's going to be a 9-9. And if we plus a 10-10... It's going to quickly become bigger than Galta, which is the biggest thing our opponent can play. They both get in there, I'll trade for the Branch Fonker, take two. Cure is also a great pickup alongside the Hydra, but I think we're okay playing the Hydra now. We could get punished by something like a Thrash Threat from our opponents. Now that the Hydra is just a 4-4, hopefully they don't have it. Just hits us for 4, that's fine. Down to 12 we go. And a Steel Leaf Champion. Alright, so it's looking good here. Another Hydra, but we're gonna play Cura. Hydra 11-11 here. Could on top of land, no reason to keep up seal away for now, play defense, and then next turn slime down a second Hydra, and that's gonna be game. The Hydra might not look great against control decks, but against any green Stompy or Gruul aggro deck, it's amazing since it's the biggest thing in play and very difficult for the opponent to remove. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand, a bit on the expensive side, and two check lands so we don't get to play all our lands on taps, but I think we can still try and keep. And we'll lead with a Glacial Fortress. Into Sunpetal Grove, into Beacon, play Narset. Turn on Lanerals, so the time wipe is going to be pretty effective. And at least we're hitting our land drops for now. Turn to Seeker Squire. Finds Hydroid Crisis, their opponent's on Soul Time mid-range. Could be winnable. Sadly, now they have enough pressure to kill our Narset on the spot, so the Seeker Squire picking up a counter was actually pretty relevant. I think it's still worth it to run out Narset. Already have two Time Wipes, I guess we'll take a Tamiyo.
and we force them to use the Lunar Elves to attack Narset. Alright, so we could run out Tamyo. Don't hit it. And I'm probably gonna plus here. And what do we name? We've seen multiple time wipes, so that's not gonna be a card we are likely to find. Already have a Hydra in hand. Could just name Teferi Hero of the Monaria. Could name Siloe. I guess Siloe is a 4 off we could draw. Nah, I should have named Teferi. Oh well. Next run we have a few options. Time wipe is looking good. And then we can minus Tamio on Teferi. Could also run out the Hydra. It's a bit weak to like a hostage taker or especially Chupacabra. I guess considering they're soul tied, they're more likely to have hostage taker. But then it could kill our Tamio as well. Yeah, it's just cast our wrath here. No tail should be discarded. And our opponent concedes, knowing we have a Teferi in hand. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. Got Kyora to ramp us into a Hydra. Facing blue green. Is it the Murfolk deck? Thunder Migration, alright, so blue green dinos. Time wipe is gonna be excellent if we can find a second white source, although Kiora could also untap our Temple Garden. Turn 3 Ripjaw Raptor. Sealway is looking good. Uh, could still play our Kiora. I think I'm okay keeping up Silo instead here. Answered Ripjaw. Keep the board under control. And hope to draw land here. And give to Paradise some more ramp. Into another migration, revealing Brontodon, which can blow up our seal away. Right, land was good. So I think it's time for Cura. I guarantee that we can cast a Hydra next turn or a Time Wipe. And I'm not sure how the blue green Dino deck deals with a giant Hydra. We'll find out. Grow Spiral in response. Make a 10 10 draw card. Haven't played our land for the turn yet. And the Hydras are only going to grow stronger from here. More growth spirals, more brontodons. I think we'll run out a second Hydra before we start growing them. So let's get in there. Play Hydra number two. And that's going to wrap things up. Alright. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand's a little bit on the slow side here with our first play on turn 4. But we've got some cheap cards we could draw. And our hand is pretty powerful once we get it going. So I think we'll keep it still. Let's see what we're up against. Turn 1 Forests. Narsus is a good pickup. 
So we can play Temple Garden Tap next turn into a beacon for Narset, and double Hydra is gonna be nice. A mono green, turn three Steel Leaf Champion. So finding a time wipe with Narset is gonna be pretty important. And there we go. So we've got our sweeper lined up. And if our opponent doesn't overextend into it, we can just play Hydra as a big blocker. Alright, red green, so our opponent's on Gruul. Second Steel Leaf. And I guess we can ditch a Growth Spiral at this point. Opponent doesn't know we have double white. So maybe they play more stuff out. Alright, they're gonna go face, ignoring Kazmina. Alright, never mind. Steel Leaf goes after Kazmina. Alright, so we could time wipe or we could play Hydra. Although the Hydra right now isn't big enough to challenge the Steel Leaf champions. So I think going for the time wipe and then following up with the big Hydra is probably okay. So we'll get in there. It's only a 2 for 1, but Steel Leaf's a pretty big threat otherwise. And we've got to hope that uh, Hydra into some Planeswalkers is good enough. Alright, it's going to be a Gruul Spellbreaker. 3-3 three, three Haste. That one we can block with Hydra if they don't have any pump spells. So we could take 4 damage in order to go Gruul Spiral into Biosense Hydra. I don't think that's worth it. Next turn we can play Kazmina plus maybe a Spiral before playing our second Hydra. If the Spellbreaker attacks, we suspect they'll have Collision Colossus, so we probably don't want to block. Yeah, I think I'll take it. Next turn, this is going to become a 9-9, so big enough to survive a Collision Colossus. Go to 9, if the Collision Colossus is a Pelt Collector, we still don't die. Alright, Pono's gonna hang back, fearing maybe not our time wipe. But now we get to run out Kazmina, and Seal Away was a great pickup since now we have some additional insurance. It's us or them. I Make an extra blocker. Focus on what matters. Can discard a land. And say go. Not really in a spot yet where we can attack with the Hydra. But as soon as we play the second one, we can maybe consider it. Seal away can't target the Spellbreaker in the opponent's turn. But even Collision Colossus here would not be enough to get past our Hydra. And our opponent's just gonna scoop it up. Just too much power and toughness for the opponent to work through. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and our hand seems keepable. Don't have green mana for the growth spiral, but we can cycle Fibblethip. We've got a time wipe to catch us back up. And as soon as we find a green source, we maybe get to ramp. Could have started with a Glacial Fortress, I guess. In case we, like, draw a breeding pool, we can play growth spiral instead of being forced to play Fibblethip. Alright, there's our Temple Garden, so next turn we can go Temple Garden, Gross Parallel, second Fibblethip. Facing a Hero of Precinct 1. Now let's see what we draw first. So we will be able to play a 5-drop next turn. Could play another Fibblethip to make it more likely that we can cast Ugin. On the following turn, I think we'll wait. Thought Erasure. 
It's gonna mess with our plan. Takes Dugan. Hero attacks. We'll take it. Tamiyo is a good pickup. Don't mind running out to Hydra. Make him deal with it. We'll keep Fibbles up on defense. Alright, Mortify kills Hydra. We'll trade with the token. Alright, land means we can Fibble Thup plus Tamiyo. Fibble Thup can chum the hero. We'll start with a Fibble Thup. Cure the pickup. I, am Tamiyo. It is an honor to meet you. I guess we can just get back an Ugin instead of the Hydra, which is a bit safer. Time you protects us from another thought erasure. It's gonna be a Sorin, which can deal damage to planeswalkers as well. So they do get to take out Tamiyo, sadly. Alright, let's uh, trade for the token. And I think I'm okay plussing the Ugin. And next turn we have a couple of options. Opponent knows about the time wipe, so they don't want to overextend. But they might be forced to. Alright, Hostage Taker steals our Ugin token. So we get Fibble Thup back to our hands. And they get to put Ugin down to one. I think it's time to wipe the board. Could play Kiora into Time Wipe. Give us more mana to work with for next turn. I guess that's reasonable. with double hero. So we can Fibble Thup, see what we draw, use Time Wipe to pick back our Fibble Thup as well. Let's attack Sorin here with our token. And I'm okay casting Time Wipe, picking up Fibble Thup, and making another token with Ugin. And our opponent's going to concede. Just too much value. Alright, that's going to do it for today. want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.